three, two, one. All right. Fucking take two. Again, a little different of an episode. Uh, I'm joined over here by Joey behind the computer. Thank you, buddy. And then via Zoom, I've got Cam is back on the show. Guy who put all this together. And then again, uh, for the first time, we've got Rojas finally here. Thank you again, man. I really, I really do appreciate it. Not just the intro bullshit thing. I really do appreciate your time. Um, basically, what we're going to cover today is a bunch of crypto and NFT stuff. I've got my opinions on it. Um, honestly, I'm pretty... I'm pretty um, not knowledgeable. I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to all this shit. So I'm interested to see what all this is about, at least at a surface level. Um, before we get started, though, it's kind of something funny to talk about. Um, so one of the cryptos I kind of want to cover is SafeMoon. And uh, so Rojas recently became a small meme in the SafeMoon community. Can you pull up Reddit real quick? Just go to Reddit and SafeMoon. Um... So, you're known as the car wash guy now. Yep. So, what what the fuck happened, man? Why why is this a thing? <laughs> All right. So, this is the order of events of how that happened. I've been trying to sell my car for like since January, January of 2021. I started trying to sell my car. Uh, posted it everywhere. But I didn't get lucky. And then I started actually getting a bunch of offers for it. Then I kind of backed off. I kind of, you know, changed my mind. I was like, I, it's my first semester this year. I kind of need to have a car. I kind of need to figure out my situation, my routine and stuff. So I changed my mind, stopped trying to sell it. And then um, three days before all that happened, I changed my mind again. And I was like, fuck it, I'm going to sell it. So I start posting it again. Immediately, I have a, uh, people start contacting me and stuff. And um, that day, I start looking actually into Safe Moon. And the reason why is because I know firsthand that cryptocurrencies can, like, you can completely change your life, completely change your life with a small investment, depending if you're early or not, right? And def- depending how you know, how it performs. Anyway, so I was starting, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm big into like trading and, you know, I do stocks and stuff. I'm not, I'm new to crypto. I'm like completely new. And I knew I've heard of SafeMoon before. I've honestly, I'd heard not really good things about it. Um, and then I kind of just didn't hear about it for a long time. And then it kind of just came back up with all the, you know, Twitter and stuff with stocks and it kind of just mixes every market together on FinTwit, on, you know, financial Twitter. So I start looking into it and I'm like, all right, like these guys have pretty solid claims, pretty solid technology. Um, Like they have a pretty solid plan of what they want to do and like new innovations and stuff. So I was like, this might be, might be pretty good. Like maybe, maybe not, might throw some money in there. So the next day um, I actually bought in. I bought into safe when I dropped like, I think like, like 200 bucks, maybe got me a a few million safe moon coins. I think it got me at first, I think I had like 14 million or something like that. So it's worth next to nothing right now. It's worth next to nothing right now. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty, that's right. So, uh, I buy into it. I'm like, all right, look, this is just spare money. Um, it might turn into hundred thousand dollars. It might turn to zero. I don't care. It's extra. It's money I'm willing to lose. Uh, so yeah, so that's what happened. And then the next day, which is a Sunday turns out safe moon has, uh, and ask me anything on Twitter every Sunday or every two Sundays. I'm not, I think it's every two Sundays actually. So that was that Sunday. That Sunday, um, the, a couple texts me and they're like, all right, we can look at the car today and see if we want to buy it or not. So I immediately get in my car, go to the car wash, try to get it. Well, by this point, actually, the AMA had already started and I joined. I was still here in my apartment and I clicked. I joined. I noticed that I was like kind of the first person on there because it took a while for everyone to get in and load. So if you don't know how it works, I guess kind of Twitter spaces, it'll let you speak on the order that you request to speak. So I was like the very first one. 
at least that's what I think. I was pretty early in there. So I go to the car wash while I'm listening to this thing. They haven't let me speak yet. They're still not taking any speakers. And um, yeah, so by the time that I'm about to be done with the drive through car wash, they actually give me the floor to speak. And I literally just said, hey, guys, how are you guys doing today? And I literally tell, you know, it was the it was the CEO of Safe Moon. It was the um, chief of products, I believe. I don't really know what his title is. Um, and, you know, a bunch of the developers, I guess, the main guys, you know. So I just tell them immediately, like, can you guys give me 30 seconds? I'm at the car wash and about to be done. So that happened. And then they let the next guy, the guy who was going to go after me, he goes before me. And then I'm done. So, right. It took me like 30 seconds to be done. I was listening to the other guy just speak. By the time he's done speaking, I just unmute myself and I'm like, okay, can I ask my question now? And I was asking John Caroni, the CEO of SafeMoon. I told him like, look, man, I'm, I'm new to crypto. I'm, I come from the stock market. Um, how do you, what do you like? I'd already done my homework on SafeMoon. I already knew somewhat of like, uh, you know, the new things that they're doing, the new new technology that they're trying to develop. But I wanted him to say why his crypto is going to be a banger once it's listed on different uh, exchanges, right? Why, it's fair. why it's fair. It's bro, it's fair. And it's that's my my logic is it's fair and it's the information you need to come out right now because we're on the verge of being listed. Safe Moon's about to be listed in like some of the biggest exchanges probably at least i'm thinking at least one of the biggest exchanges before the end of the year uh and then they have they have two exchanges that they're uh very excited about um we don't know what they are yet but bro it's like why would i buy that crypto you know like there's a million cryptos there's so many cryptos that come out every single week why is yours going to make investors rich and the ne- the one next to yours is not, you know, what yeah. sets you apart? So, yeah, so he started talking about everything that they want to do. Um, he started, you know, telling me about the whole environment that they're trying to create with all their products. Kind of like, he kind of sold me with that word. When he mentioned the environment, I was like, this is it, man. Because I've never seen anything else like that in crypto. Like, uh, they're going to have, think of it like, I don't know, like Apple or like, um Amazon with Alexa and stuff, you know, all their products kind of work uh, within each other and they create a whole environment. And that's really what um, what locks Apple uh, users in the Apple. You know, that's the reason why most Apple users still have an iPhone because of the whole Apple environment. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, so that's trying to... they still have me as a fucking iCloud. Yeah. So they mm-hmm. have me. Well, yeah, exactly. That it, it, like it just works together so well. Right. So that's what they're trying to do with uh, Safe Moon. You know, a bunch of different products that are going to work simultaneously together, apart from like helping uh, countries in Africa and stuff. They're going to do a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's a deflationary token. Uh, it's, you know, it's going to burn the supply. It's going to give people passive income for holding it, essentially, you know, incentivizing holding the crypto rather than uh, fiat money like US dollars, you know. So there's a bunch of things to it, man. Like there is a lot to it. And what I said, even before, what I was thinking, even before I spoke to John Caroni, John Caroni, sorry, uh, is that if these guys actually deliver on their products, uh, if these guys deliver on everything that they want to do, this like SafeMoon is bound to be a giant, bro. SafeMoon is bound to be a crypto giant. So if you invest some money now, you might have a fortune later. And, you know, it's not nothing certain. Uh, because you never know, you just never know. But yeah. you know, one one thing I consider a lot is that um, they they're very transparent. So uh, I have a lot of faith in them. Actually, they're very transparent. They're you know I've never seen another crypto team that actually you know everyone shows their face. You know exactly who these people are, and you can tell that they're here to stay. But yeah, I think I'm kind of I'm kind of just running on. So. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened that Sunday. Then after that, everyone started just to make fun of me and everyone started posting memes on Twitter. I started retweeting stuff. You know, bro, you know me. I'm like, I'm, I, I didn't get mad. I didn't, 
I, yeah. I didn't get butt hurt or anything. I just, <laughs> I just laughed at him, bro. I just, I seriously, I just straight up laughed at it. And then I just became, then they started posting pictures of me and they're like, uh, this fucking guy's the head of the Safe Moon Army and shit. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it, man. <laughs> okay, so my buddy, he just pulled up one and it's you. Okay, so it's your fucking, uh, it's your Instagram. It might be your Twitter too, where you're in the red cutoff. And it's got your eyes all fucking blue and you're in a Volkswagen. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, what happened? And that's that's how the car wash, Safe Moon car wash guy came to be. So, okay, Cam, what have you heard about Safe Moon? Do you know what's going on with this? Because my yeah. my only exposure to this is a mutual friend of ours, Evan. He bought Safe Moon fuck, like four months ago. And Last I talked to him, yeah, he's, yeah, he's holding, he's been holding for a while. He's got something north of like, I think like 20, 25 million at this point. I think he told me of safe, uh, of safe moon. Oh no, dude, this guy had 20, 25 million dollars. Fucking, <laughs> I'd be living in his basement. <laughs> So what do you know about Safe Moon, Cam? What's your exposure? Uh, mostly, Safe Moon has just been another kind of shit coin out there. Like uh, that's it's literally what they call shit coins or or altcoins, if you want to refer to them like that. Uh, they're just fucking like random ass projects out there, like like Doge, like Shiba, um, like Woof, even. Uh, they're just a bunch of random shit coins out there that, you know, eventually do take off, you know, like uh, back in June, I bought like a hundred bucks worth of Shiba just because I had a hundred dollars burning a hole in my pocket. I was like, fuck it. You know, if I lose it, I lose it. Um, and then, you know, it, it 10 X and it went up to like a thousand like a week ago, which kind of went crazy for the, uh, for the cryptocurrency market. Can you pull it up? Can you find that while he's talking real quick, please? What she was holding yeah, at I right got, now? It's at like 40. Shiba coins. So what did you buy? I have Shiba too. What did you buy at? Um, I don't know, but I had Dude. a lot of it. I had I don't, like Yeah, I don't, I don't think least, you would know. It's probably it probably had like 10 zeros in front of it. 10 zeros at a minimum. But I bought it in like when it was like maybe hundred thousandths of a cent. Each coin was worth that much. And, you know, somehow it increased in value 10x over time. So it's sitting in like a, my $100 investment is sitting in like a thousand bucks right now, which is just dumb. Uh, yeah. So we're, yeah, he's got the market up right now for the cryptos. And I see that spike. Wait, oh God, my eyes fucking suck, dude. When was, when is that huge spike at? That was like three days ago, four days ago. So three days ago four, was when it hit its peak. Yeah. 10. 27 so like a few days ago and that was at what uh 80 0. 0.00008719 cents okay well i don't know what the fuck that is but okay so but you i mean oh. i mean you turned uh 100 into a thousand so that's something that isn't that isn't nothing at all you know that's something yeah um but okay so one thing I did, I'm most curious about here. My yeah. Uh, one thing I'm most curious about is NFTs. Because from what I know about NFTs, it's pictures that you invest in or some shit, right? It's, it's something that you invest, right? So what's an NFT? An NFT is a non-fungible token stored on a cryptocurrency blockchain. Um, it's a token that can be represented by like a picture, um, a video, a, a GIF. Literally, it can be, it can be anything. Um, the uh, kind of the idea behind it is it's kind of a store value. It can kind of be like a membership type thing. Um, it's, it has tremendous potential for, for utility. Because it's both on cryptocurrency and it really can be anything that you want, you know? Um, 
just kind of the value of the market has absolutely imploded, exploded, sorry. Um, go to OpenSea.io, Mr. Mr. Joey. I'm going to pull that up. Collect or discover, collect, and excel extraordinary NFTs. And we got like kind of like a mosaic on there. So oh, search in the top search bar at the top, top board ape yacht club. You guys actually might have heard of this one. I, I gotta be honest with you, I, I don't know shit about any of this. It's basy, it's basy. Okay, so we're looking at a bunch of like it looks like the gorillas. So yeah. And which one? So what? Okay, so we've got. So a floor price is thirty-two diamonds. What is that? What's that symbol? Thirty-two. Thirty-two Ethereum. Oh shit! Holy shit! Okay, so for people who don't, because I kind of know what Ethereum is. If, if so, if if bit when it comes to like cryptos. If Bitcoin is number one, Ethereum is at like slot two or three, right? At the most valuable? It's about slot two. It's about slot two. Um, with Solana probably sitting at number three. Yeah, if you look I'd up an say. Ethereum price, yeah. Right now it's, 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 it's 4532 To rank the cryptocurrencies uh, because there, there's a lot more that goes into it than just the price of one of their tokens. You've got, you know overall transaction fees that are going to impact the overall utility of the coin itself. Like the Ethereum blockchain is completely throttled right now. Uh, I think at least half the current transactions, you know, if, if in 20 minutes you're, you know, using 20 Ethereum to process, um, to process transactions on the blockchain, then probably half of those are being used in Uniswap which is used to swap Ethereum for other altcoins like, like Sheeb, like Doge, like, like any other kind of altcoin. So half of the, of like the, the blockchain itself is just completely throttled right now. Um, so Ethereum might be at an all-time high right now just cool. because the utility of it is it's kind of lackluster right now. About like two or three weeks ago, it would have cost like, I don't know, probably like a hundred dollars to send a couple of Ethereum to an address. Now it could be 500 to a thousand. So what we're, what, what we're looking at right now is that Ethereum. Okay. So Ethereum is at a little over 4,500, um, a coin. And then you've got Ethereum two sitting at the same thing. And then it drops to like 558 for Binance coin. But fucking Bitcoin is at $61,000. So, so go back to the NFTs real quick. So if we're looking at, let's go up. If we're looking at 32 Ethereum, good God, what is that? 4,500 times 30, 32? For a picture. Do you see where I'm coming from with this? Like, it's a picture, bro. I can. Yeah, I, see, I see you, man. <laughs> I can take a screenshot of that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so what's okay? So maybe there's something I have to be missing. And please, one of you, please explain this to me. It's the magic of the blockchain, bro. What do you mean? Okay, it's great. The magic of the blockchain. It's the magic of the hype behind the project. It's the magic of this is one of the first of its kind as a, as a digital art that is stored on the Ethereum blockchain. There's, you know, it's kind of like a membership pass. Like you're going to pay a, over a hundred grand for a membership pass to a picture. Yeah. What? Okay. Like, okay. Because I that, that's it. that should be everyone's goal. That should be everyone's end goal. Be able to pay a fucking hundred thousand dollars subscription for a picture, bro. Okay, okay. Well, think about it this way, Noah. How stupid it is that people pay millions of dollars for art? Okay, but yes. Okay, 
Okay, counter. Okay, counter to that then. Okay. I get that, right? People pay millions of dollars for a piece of art, whether it's like a an actual painted, you know, picture, a fucking a marble statue. Or just a line on a piece of paper. Right, I get that, right? I get that. But there's a novelty to that because it's by the original artist. You can hold it. You can frame it, all that good stuff. If I'm looking at what we're looking at right now is a monkey in 3D glasses from like the 1970s, okay? So if I look, if I pull that up on my phone right now and I just screenshot it. Hey, yeah, 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 you can't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then I have it. And then if I wanted to, I can go to fucking. But it's not, but you're not the owner of the NFT. You, you, you catch the drift. You're not. You're not the owner, bro. It's, their- it's like screenshotting a piece of art. You're not the owner of the art piece, but you can still look at the picture. That you don't just own like the JPEG that it is. You own all of you own the the tokens on the blockchain, which in and of itself has value. So if you buy, okay, let's say I had like fuck you money, right? I had stupid money, and I went and I buy myself that. A board ape yacht club for one hundred and fifty eight thousand two hundred and twenty nine dollars and seventy five cents. Yes, so for exactly that much, if, a minimum bid. If I drop one hundred and sixty k because I outbid somebody, okay, one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. I now own that picture, but then anybody who, oh, oh we we have a forty minute time limit. Fuck you, Zoom. Okay, so. I now that I have bought this picture, do I now own any Bitcoin or or cryptocurrency? Rather, do I own the crypto that is attached to the picture? Is that what the investment is? Well, that's what well you now own hundred. Yeah, that's it's what, worth that's what it's worth. Bro. Okay. Also, also take note that I feel. Personally, I feel like there's a shitload, like a shitload of money laundering going on in the oh, NFT no. world. Oh no, 100%. There's money laundering, it, there's like tax a shitload. Okay, that's great. Okay, so, okay. No, okay. That's great. <laughs> that is great. No, I get it. Our tax is clearly... Publicly endorsed tax fraud. Yes, but also when there's a nationwide manhunt going on and our best leads are coming out of vloggers finding a van and edited videos and then dog the bounty hunter finding this guy, our taxes aren't really going towards something good. I'm sorry, but any three-letter fucking agency is not doing their job right now. I'm just saying. But anyway, anyway. So I spend $160,000 and I buy Board Ape Yacht, Ape Yacht Club. So, so go back to the original page because it's showing us like, like a grid of a bunch of different monkeys, pretty much. A bunch of different pictures of monkeys. So I now own all of these monkeys. No, you own one. There's 10,000 of them and you own one. One. But okay. But so then are people investing their Ethereum on one picture? Yeah. So, okay, then here's my next question then. Why in the world would you invest? Okay, I think I just answered my own question in my head actually. So let's say you've got the ape with the fucking 3D glasses on. Is the purpose of investing your Ethereum that you've bought with real money, is your purpose in investing the Ethereum on that one monkey... Because when someone comes in and buys the whole thing, you get a kickback? Well, no. Yes, you're... yes and no. So to, to kind of Yeah, to, to kind of elaborate on that. Um, when you when you sell on kind of this standard um, market for, for OpenSea for NFTs, NFTs the markets, the secondary market is OpenSea. That's the secondary market for Ethereum based NFTs. Um, let's say, you know, just for the sake of the example, there is, there is a collection of 10 NFTs, just a random collection of 10 NFTs. Um, so OpenSea will take a transaction fee in order to, you know, just a transaction fee and a portion of that transaction fee will go to the creators. And in turn, 
a portion of that of that transaction fee is going to go to anyone who holds this collection. So if you if you sell a board ape, ten percent of it goes to the creators as just you know the creators and owners of the collection, and then a smaller percentage of that is dispersed among the holders of it. That's one portion of the utility. And you know if you're selling for one hundred fifty racks, you know that's that's something. It's it's, it's something to kick back on. There are additionally you have just a bunch of membership benefits. You'll also get exclusive access to additional projects just because this is the, the brand name. This is the golden standard when it comes to NFT projects. Um, so Board 8 Yacht Club will partner with projects to give their, their holders exclusive access to those projects. I hear they're, you know, taking all of their holders on a yacht, on a, like a private yacht or something like that. Um, hey, so... $22 million. Okay, yeah. So what Joey just pulled up is a Tiger King NFT that is currently going for 5000 Ethereum. And that means, and it does the minimum bid for you, that is over, actually it's almost $23 million. What's the name of the project? Noble Creatures. Yeah, noble creatures. Oh, noble creatures, yeah. Okay, so do you do you see why do you are you So okay, like I see like okay. So I see a lot of people doing it. Now, if the answer cuz an easy answer for me is money laundering. You're right. I've been thinking this whole thing is a really easy way to launder money. And I get that. And if that's the main reason, I sure I get it. It's all digital. It's all whatever, and the face of it are they like whatever whatever money you have on there. Whatever money, if you sell an NFT, you'll just tell you'll just tell the IRS that it's a it's an art sale. That's it. That's where it came from. Now you understand. And and let's look into that real quick. So you're familiar with like that. that art donation tax evasion loophole. We talked about that on on your we talked about that on your last episode. Yes. This is okay, so I make a collection of NFTs. Uh let's just sit for the sake of the arguments. Uh the little cuddly cats. That's the name of the NFT. Okay. I make um a collection of one. There's only one NFT in this project. There's only one of them. Okay. Um, I, I donate it to you. I donate it to you. Okay. Um, then, you know, you list it on OpenSea for 50 ETH, about $200,000. Where is the argument that I did not just donate 50, 50 ETH, $200,000 to you? Because I then value it. Because I then value it at that 50 Ethereum, which gives it the value. Yeah, exactly. So, congratulations. I now have a tax write off for 200k. Do you know uh you know who Steve will do it is? No. Yeah. Well, do you know who the Nuck boys are? No. Yep. All right, it's well it's a bunch of people with buttload of money on YouTube just spending on, you know, r- ridiculous cars, houses, uh watches, everything. Anyway, the point is, these are YouTubers, right? And they're, they're involved with uh, certain companies um, that promote gambling. And they do this through crypto, right? So you're gambling crypto. You're turning your money into crypto and you're gambling. But these companies are offshore uh, crypto casinos. So like literally outside of the US, right? They follow no loss as long as you pay them money and stuff. So... These guys are, you know, the people from these, they're, this is ongoing drama, by the way. You can find a lot about this on YouTube right now. So what were the two, I was trying to find some articles. We'll stay away from videos uh, just because it makes things a lot more complicated because they can't watch them. Uh, who was the first group of guys? Steve will do it. Steve will do it? Look up Steve will do it, Rubet. R-O-O-B-E-T. Oh, oh Rubet. Yeah. Stay yeah, so they're, 
they're they're in pretty deep I, shit right now. They're in pretty deep shit because um, they're you know people on the internet are starting to figure out what uh, these casinos are about and how they fuck people over and how they turn gambling addicts. Basically, they just milk gambling addicts. So I was gonna say, well, we just pulled up Steve will do it, and on his page, Bradley Martin's on it. Yeah, yeah, these are big guys, bro. The Nelk boys are pretty freaking big. I'm surprised you don't know about them. So, okay, this is kind of how I'm digesting this. Basically, the U.S. government has fucked our financial system so bad that people with the money, like people with a lot of money beforehand, are just pioneering their way into digital money. Digital tax fraud, tax evasion. Yeah, so they don't have to pay taxes. Because of how the laws are set up right now, the new loophole is make it all digital. Find your stuff like the art, like that art clause. As, as long as you can make it legal, as long, as long as you can claim that money came in legally. Like, let, let me finish um, getting to the point. Yeah, yeah, go these ahead. Ca- the, the casinos, these casinos I'm talking about, like Ruben and stuff, people just starting to, you know, put two and two together and started to figure out basically everything. They found out that these are offshore uh, crypto casinos. Uh, they fuck a lot of people over. And the good thing about blockchain, um, and like uh, like Camden said, NFTs are on the blockchain. So you can keep track of literally, the, the blockchain is like a ledger, right? You can keep track of every single transaction ever made for every NFT or like every contract, every token, yeah. whatever, right? Everyone has their unique unique wallet address so if if you have a wallet in crypto it's yours that wallet address is no one else's exactly so so if i give you my wallet right now you'd be able to go in there put uh, type it in and see exactly what i have in my wallet as far as cryptos uh nfts literally anything so with the blockchain people started to follow the trace and they figured out that these offshore crypto casinos are taking all that like illegal billions of dollars, putting them into open sea and selling it as art. So now they can tell the IRS, I got this 5 billion as an art sale. So, but, but is it illegal then because it was offshore and because they don't have to play by any rules? It's, I mean, it's, is it, is it immoral? Maybe it's immoral as fuck. It's immoral as fuck because because then it's because they're just saying to these gambling, if it is from gambling, what is the what is the online casino called again? Uh, there's Ru- Rubet and then there's Wizza or some shit like. All right, that. look up R U B E T. Steak. steak as well, like a wooden steak. That's pretty pretty popular as well. My friends use it. <laughs> I it, typed it in the chat. Is it okay? Let's see. It's R O O B E T. Okay, so see if you can find anything about them with the gambling addicts. See if you can find anything like that. Whoa, well, that looks like a fucking online casino. Whoa, yep, bright colors, bunch of just right. nameless BS. Yep, pretty pretty digital women. Yeah, it's a deal or no deal thing. Oh, my God. Okay, anyway, so, okay, let's just get rid of this chat notification. Okay, so, hey, get out of there, stupid. You're here to spend my fucking money. It's not logged in. I'm just watching what people are waging, dude. Oh, shit. Okay, so see if you can find anything, though, about just... Exa- I mean, I see your point with the whole gambling addicts thing. I see your point. And I and I, I, I get how you can make that connection. I just want to see if you can find any, like, hard... Fuck- I, li- I like to find, like, hard evidence. So, like, let's say, right, that they're saying, hey, because I know there's a lot of stupid online gambling laws in this country, especially around sports. And... I don't know how DraftKings made their way around it, but they obviously have. Um, Not in some locations. Like, it's not available in some states. Right in Jersey, it's not, right? Here, it's not either. Really? New Mexico? No, DraftKings isn't available in New Mexico. It's only available in, like, two states. Be devil's advocate real quick. But VPNs. Pay taxes on crypto. Say it again.
Well, exactly. I was just about to say that. Is like I, I think the big hang up between something like money being backed by gold, which anyway our money isn't. With all this money they're fucking printing right now, you're actively de- like our currency is gonna flop, and we're. Did we drop the gold standard Something like that, but so either way though, let's say we did magically have, you know, enough money to back up eighty percent or enough gold to back up eighty percent of our currency, right? Let's say like that's the case. You can touch gold, right? You can you can hold it, right? It's there, but with crypto. It's like a um it's like a placeholder. It's it's a um Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's what gold is too, man. Yeah, like right, what it, gives it, gold, you know, let's say a hundred dollars an ounce. Why is it a hundred dollars an ounce? Because you're able to equate it with whatever our paper bullshit is. It's just trading gold. Why why is gold you know, who says this much gold is worth this much dollars? Oh, I'm not smart enough to answer that question. There's nothing really that says that. That's just, it's just saying this much of gold is worth this much dollars. Right. Okay. Yes. And that's like our, I think one of the, that is like our accepted thing to keep to like at the beginning, at least to keep society together. It's like, this is what we're going to say. This much is worth. Have your paper, go spend your money. Now I get it. Right. And I agree with you about the whole libertarian statement. Like, I agree with you. It makes sense because now that our financial situation is that, especially post COVID, oh shit, especially post COVID, our financial situation is so just incredibly fucked now that it makes sense to take it digital because gold, gold and silver is losing value by the second. And now, like, I saw, an, I saw an article about an hour and a half before we started this um, that they're about to, they're voting in on a new bill by 12 a.m. tonight. That's going to spend like another $3 trillion. And so you can't just keep printing fucking money like this because our shit's going to flop. But because of all that, now we have all these people with a fuck ton of money going in and doing this. And frankly, I mean, I get it. Is it maybe immoral because they figure a way to pander to people and get people like me or really like us? That we do, All of us don't really have like hundreds of millions of dollars hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, I don't know what you guys do with your lives. Maybe you do have a couple hundred thousand dollars laying around, but I know I don't. And so if I had a gambling problem and I see something like fucking Rubet, where it's like, oh, it's all like big, it's all like these cryptos. Why not? So I, I get that. Well, that part is definitely kind of immoral. It's, it's playing to them to it's pandering, as you said, to someone who's already very, um, you know, liable to, literally gamble away their entire mortgage for that month in in a matter of hours and then do it again i don't have a problem with them you know doing the tax thing necessarily because um you know what are tax dollars even used for and how did the government even help them make that money but that's just me no i I agree that's kind of that's kind of the point of decentralized uh decentralized finance too huh it's just trying yep. to get it back in dollars, man, you know, so you can actually spend it because um, not everyone takes crypto right now, but I bet you yep. they will eventually. Well, what kind of fucked with me a little bit was I was having this conversation, like I said, with our mutual friend. Uh, we were having this conversation about like when Dogecoin was having its big spike and people were like, what the fuck is going on? I remember I went to... There, there's, there's differences between shit coins... I'd like to say that a shit coin and an altcoin are not necessarily the same thing. I would say I would say Dogecoin is in shib and like fucking I don't know if you've heard about the Squid Game coin that was in. Oh yes, okay. No, funny you bring that up. I actually have that. Okay, so I just have look, look before before you go. Yeah, bro. Though to me, those are shit coins. I would say those are shit coins to the max. There's no utility at all. But there's other coins that do have utility and that will have more future utility. Open your you know? Joey. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Like like SafeMoon. That's kind of, you know, that's why I'm saying if SafeMoon delivers, bro, it's going to be a giant because of the utility. Because P- there's actually a reason to own SafeMoon. There's no freaking reason to own SHIB or Doge other than the hype. It's hype. <laughs> exactly. It's just hype. 
You know, it's just people trying to make money. It's just like, okay, I'm going to throw in a hundred dollars because I know it's going to 10 X. Obviously Camden didn't knew that he kind of, he, I suppose Camden didn't know. I, I assume he got real lucky. I don't think anyone knew at that point. Right. It's just the lucky ones, but there's other projects, you know, there's other safe moon is a company. Safe moon's a whole company. It's not just a token. Uh, it's not just a wallet. It's not just a few, uh, a blockchain that's coming up later, you know, before the end of the year, it's not just those things. It's a company. And what's one of the main goals of every company to maximize investor return, right? So th why that's why I'm saying if SafeMoon delivers, bro, you can expect that thing to be in the dollars within like, give it 18 months. I guarantee you it's going to be pretty, a lot higher than where it is now. And so the and, and on that note, yeah. so just the whole thing with companies, and organizations coming out with their own cryptocurrency projects do you remember what facebook did around a week ago the, 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 met the metaverse the meta shit no, okay so funny and, you bring that what, up what coin what coin was a part of their their new project the metaverse mana it went up like 10x is that is that the central land yeah, decentralized. It went up like three or four X in, in a matter of hours, I think. It was absolutely insane. Like That's why I'm saying, do you understand the power of crypto now? That's why I don't mind dropping some change into something like SafeMoon. When yeah. compared to other coins, it's got potential, dude. It's got like a lot more potential than Doge will ever have, you know? And so the people who started up safe moon were these people that already got us they already were established had a lot of money and they're like hey we're gonna start a crypto but we're gonna actually make it legitimate to be honest i have no idea i don't know about that um like as, as far as like the founders and stuff i don't know but it's like okay now now let's talk about the uh the squid game coin so i got joey pulling that up so the the headline that i saw was that squid game Cryptocurrency scammers make off with $3.3 million in a rug pool quote scam. Um, that sounds that sounds too too little. I'm betting it was a lot more than that. Just 3.3 mil. What are you what are you finding right now? Uh, I'm looking, dude. This, that was just on I would say look would... at the market cap. Look at the mar market cap of um of squid game before it plummeted that's probably how market much market cap 112 million real time right now what was it at at its highest because mm. i'd say the difference is what they took the where's the all-time high uh all-time high so this, but okay. So is this Squid Game crypto legitimate or is it a scam, bro? That's it was. It, there's a video. There's a. It, they pulled it out at six hundred and twenty-eight point three. Oh no, sorry. It's only ten point eight three million. So in the in the crypto, and it's dropped with with uh, the Squid Coin. They call it a rug pull. That's when the developers fuck you over entirely, a hundred percent. They front load you. By the time you invest your money, they fuck you over. Yeah. So Vargas. Yeah. It it peaked at five hundred and eighty-two dollars. No. I mean. No. This one says it peaked at. Is it something? And then it dropped. Six hundred and twenty-eight. Uh, what I'm seeing is that it peaked at six hundred twenty-eight thirty-three. That's what Joey's got. One hundred and twelve million dollars. A hundred and how much? I'm sorry. Say it again. One hundred and twelve million three hundred ten thousand five hundred seventy-eight dollars and twenty-two cents. All right. So over a hundred, over a hundred thousand dollars is what it was worth. And so yeah, then we just no, no, no. steep drop. That is what we like to call a red candle. No, that's a hundred million dollars. What did I say? Hundred thousand. It's a hundred million dollars, and then it just went straight to zero. Five twenty-five a.m. Six hundred twenty-eight dollars. I'm, I'm seeing three cents. 
I'm seeing a peak uh, of $2,856. From where? What? I where? got that from Yahoo News. So everything. Yeah, coin market cap is telling me it peaked, well, this year at least, $600. That's what I saw too. Yeah, that's what, that's what Joey's got too. So what, okay, so then what, break this down for people listening that don't really, they're trying their best to follow this. Because frankly, I am too. So the, you see that huge peak, right? Where it's at over $100 million of what it's worth. Then it just fucking plummets. It's a straight down, right? What causes it to go straight down? What do the developers do? The whales pull out. The whales sell, sell their position. So they just sold. They just sold it all. Like, it's like, it's like, um, it's like, uh, I don't know, man, like, like I have a bunch of something you don't know that I have it, and then I can just sell all of it, and all of a sudden there's you know there's more in the market, so the value of it just it's drops. gone, right? It's gone. So like what I, what I meant was, well, sometimes with these crypto projects, the developers they'll put in, they'll throw in their life savings, they'll throw in everything, you know, they'll start their crypto project, make it, you know. Sometimes it's a fucking shit coin like that, like the squid one. Well, there's, I don't think there was a project behind that or anything. It was just hype from the squid game show, right? So once they see that people start fucking pouring all their money in there, they see the value of the coin start skyrocketing. By this time, these guys have literally like pulled a thousand percent on their investment or more, probably like a lot more. Than and they just take it and run. Yeah. They're the first ones to yeah, buy Vargas, the, the price, the price so they have the majority of coins. The price dropped from six hundred twenty-eight dollars and thirty-three cents to point zero 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 seven dollars in fifteen minutes. Well, that was big ass whales. Well, that was what was interesting. Look, look, hold on, hold on. Yeah, go ahead. Look at base moment. And again, this is all the blockchain. This is all the best thing to think about the blockchain. It's all public. It's all public. So you can go online, you can look at the different whales and different cryptos. And if you look at base moment, bro, we don't have shit. We don't have any whales, bro, compared to those currencies. So on that aspect, you're safe. It's not going to be a rough one. So, you, you, I mean, you, you, you asked a good question is it's why, why was that allowed to happen? And that, I mean, that's what happens. Because it's not regulated. Exactly. Because it's decentralized finance. Right. And that, I mean, that's, that's why you, you better, like, you better know what you're buying. Yeah. See, I'm torn. You're buying it from. I'm torn, right? Because on the one hand, it's, yeah, you got to get your shit together, know what they're, know what you're buying and know the risk. And you... If you decide to dump tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars into a, something like this, that we don't, the general public does not know. Of, whenever there's something that's hot that the general public does not know a whole lot about, but a select group of people know a lot about, there's a lot of risk in that. And you need to be able to assess that. On the other hand, is it fucked up? For those people, those whales you were referring to them as, is it fucked up for them to do that? Yeah, you know what? That's that's a pretty shitty move. But I mean, when someone when someone loads you a gun, gives it to you, and says, "Please shoot me," and then you decide to kill them, I mean, 
but see, there's there's two two different scenarios. Um, you know, most most crypto projects are gonna have their whales. That's just people who manage to get like billions or trillions of coins when it was like, you know, a millionth of a cent or whatever. What's well, so a startup, a, a, startup a, needs a, a ton of money. It well, it's not even that, bro. You at that at that point in time, you can get that many coins for like twenty bucks or less, right? So there's, you know, say me, for example, I go on SafeMoon now, I put in a thousand bucks two years from now, hopefully like 300,000. Of course, I'm going to want to pull out, dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Of course, I want to take some profits. SafeMoon's different because they incentivize you to keep your money in there, which is what most people are going to do. But um, they introduce obviously, obviously, when once you make a good return, you want to. What's that? They introduced staking their coin, didn't they? I have no idea. I don't know. No, I thought I'd seen something like that. But if or anyone, like it's similar to where you. Look, I, I was saying um, the, you know, obviously when you make a good return, a lot of people are going to want to sell their coins, which is totally acceptable. That's for the you know regular person who just happened to get lucky. Then uh, there's the other thing, which is what happened with with Squidcoin, which was a straight up rock pull, and that's the people who made the crypto they fucked you. So it's two different things. Oh, I I agree, and I mean, yeah, if you <clears throat> if you decide to go in on any company and you invest a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars, and you end up making six figures or more on the back end, you're gonna want to pull out. That's the whole point. That's the whole reason why you gave them money in the first place was to make money. That's the whole point. Um, what the fuck? So, okay, so going, revisiting the NFT subject. Here's another. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay, so Joey just pulled up the, the stat, some stats on Doge. So the average whale value of Doge is just under $49 million. $49 million or 49 million Doge? Or no, I'm sorry. 49 million Doge 12 million. and $12 million. But still. But what, what percentage of the supply do the whales own? That's what you want to look at. That's what I'm trying to find. I'll find he's, he's trying to figure it out. Um, What's a website that would give you all those stats? I forget what it is. So we're looking at Clank right now. I think it's the Coin world's Gecko biggest holder shit. of Dogecoin owns twenty eight percent of the market. How much? Oh, this is from February twenty twenty one. Oh, I found it. It's the, called the Rich List, and the percentage is twenty three point six three percent. Yeah, so it dropped, Cam. Uh, so right now the richest we're looking. Can you zoom in a little bit, dude? My eyes fucking suck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so you've got the richest, rich, or the list of people with Doge. We've got 23.63%, and then it drops down to 3.81%. But even that 3.81% is still at 1.2 million. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or 1.3 million. No. Yes. No. That's a billion dollars, dude. Is that a bill? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's that's these people these people have billions of dollars worth of crypto, dude. That's crazy. Bro, that that top whale owns eight billion one hundred and eighty five million nine hundred and fifty seven thousand three hundred and one dollars and thirteen cents. This is what happens when capitalism fails us. Imagine when that dude says, all right, enough, this thing's going down, I'm going to sell my position. Imagine what's going to happen. Dog, if I had, go up, please. If I had $8 billion in a thing called Dogecoin, provided that I don't have a heart attack every time I see my fucking crypto wallet, I would sell that so fast. You have no idea. It would not even be a fucking question. Okay, but who's to say that's not the owner of Doge? <laughs> exactly. See, and that's that's just it. It's like, okay, fine. Let's say owner is number one, and then his rich butt buddy is number two. 
I just made $1.3 billion. My grandkids are set. I'm pulling out. I had no idea there was this much money in fucking Doge. Bro, that's the, the, the whole crypto market's worth like, I think like, it, well, I know it's in the trillions now. I, I forget how much, but. So that statement, that statement doesn't surprise me. Okay, when I hear things like Elon Musk, you know, doesn't allow uh, Tesla to take Bitcoin anymore and then it drops from like 62,000 to like 53,000 in one day. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not surprised by that, right? Nothing about that surprise. It's 2.84 uh, trillion, the global crypto market cap, which is the, the value, the right. dollar value of the market. That's crazy, huh? Okay. Blows okay. my fucking mind. So, okay. G again, I, I kind of want to revisit the NFT subject. Because I think this uh, will... Is, that's a great, great point for it. Uh, I'm going to send you a link. Because I'm on the best of... Holy shit. Dude. Well, text, text that to Joey, if you can. Text it to Joey. Because he's the one on the computer right now, not me. This is Ethereum, dude. Oh my god. $36 yeah, billion. Dollars. Check your Discord. No, send, send that to Joey. Because Unless, Joey, do you have Discord on your phone? Yeah. Okay, he's checking it. Okay, so here's, here's my question. And maybe this will help me understand NFTs a little bit better. Wait, Joey, what's your Discord? Bro, you have it, stupid. Oh, uh, Warghost? <laughs> No, no, that's, that's Joe. Or that's me. It should be depressed, depressed Spidey boy. boy. Should be what? Oh, just, Spidey, depressed Spidey boy. Yeah. Just text it to him. Anyway, so look, let's say, let's say I wanted to make an NFT for the podcast, and it's just our logo. Yeah. How do I add value to that? Um, your community, utility. Great, great timing, actually. The minting period just opened up for this for this one NFT. Yo, Rojas, have you heard of Bear X? Say again. Bear X. Bear X is that no, what is that? Oh, it's an NFT. Uh, but Joe, you see the NFT I just sent, the collection? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah. So that is an NFT I'm gonna be I'm gonna be minting. Um, it's and I want to talk about how it kind of has utility. So number one, the, the utility from it is going to be the fact that you can stake, stake these and make, um, make passive income from it. So think of it like a savings account where you stake them on, um, on the project's site and they'll passively earn income based upon how many sales are being um, how many sales of the barracks of the collection there are? Um, uh, it's is it's that, really that, it's really something. Are you sure you can do that in the U.S.? Because I remember seeing yet just yesterday I saw that someone was trying to stake uh, Cardano, and it was not it's not available yet in the U.S. So, so it's it's not it's not for a cryptocurrency. You're staking it to earn uh, tokens that are unique to the project itself, which can be then exchanged for cryptocurrency. Okay. So there's so a, there's so a workaround like, for it. So it's within within the ecosystem, within, within like the project itself. Within the Bear X project ecosystem itself. Okay, I see. Noah, um, you, you said something that, um, fuck, you, <laughs> I thought of something. Um, you asked a question and I had like, Forget it. I, I, well, I asked about what if I made an NFT for the podcast. Oh, um, no. You asked how do you give oh. value to that? Let me let me tell you. Um, so this is something that happened very recently, and you might have seen it on Facebook or Instagram or something, because a lot of people talked about it. There was uh, an NFT sale that went for five hundred million. Fuck you. Okay. Fuck five hundred million. For what? <laughs> so there was. 500 million, half a billion dollars for some dumbass. It was the, not like, it's the ugliest NFT I've seen. 
It's like an eight bit NFT. So it was a five hundred bit uh, million dollar sale. But check this out. Check this out. Um, so it sold. Like someone spent five hundred million dollars for a picture. I'm about to turn into fucking Alex Jones, dude. They didn't. Let me finish. No, let me get to it. This might be useful for you. So what they did is uh, what what's known as a wash sale. What that means is if you go and look at the blockchain, you'll be able to see that this NFT was in fact sold for 500 million, 500 whatever million dollars. Um, but it was given right back to the person who sold it for zero for free. Right. And this ended up in the news. This ended up in social media everywhere. What they did is a wash sale that basically just raises the price of the NFT because everyone's like, oh, this thing's worth that much, right? Or like when you're bidding, if you're bidding for an NFT, just type in any fucking number you want and hope that people are going to, you know, start bidding higher. And if it doesn't work, just send it right back. So that's what happens with that. That's how they try to add value to that. Five hundred million dollar NFT. Interesting. So let me let me make sure I grasp that because I've never been a math guy. I've never been a finance guy. So let me like make sure I got that right. You have the NFT. Person A sold it to person B for five hundred million. Or they person A has two wallet addresses and they just bought it with their their secondary wallet. So as I was gonna say, the roundabout of it is that they basically gave money to themselves and because that NFT has a track record of being sold for $500 million, that NFT is now worth $500 million. There you go. Exactly. Son of a bitch, that's smart. Now granted, if you're able to spend, there it is right there, perfect. If you're able to spend $500 million on something, that's one way to do it, sure. But like, was it on um crypto crypto punk something? Yep. Crypto yep, punks. Yeah, I love crypto punks. <laughs> wow. Isn't that crazy? Holy shit. It's crazy, right? Do you understand? Do you understand the possibilities with this shit? Bro, we're in an age where the boomers are starting to have more money than us once again. They have it, Which is they have it easier. They had it easier in their times. We're fucked. Now I'm trying to see how the fuck I'm going to become a millionaire by the time I finish grad school, which is going to happen. I've already decided. So I'm, I'm going to tell, I'm, I'm taking full advantage of this shit one way or another. So it's a, there's a bunch of possibilities, bro. There are. There are. Um, I'm glad we're not done by any means. I know it's wrap up here maybe in the next 20 minutes. Um, but I'm glad we did this. Um, this has opened my eyes to a lot. And I don't want this to be the last one between the four of us. We need to sit down again. And uh, we'll do this every couple of months. And we'll hash this out. Um, so Hey, uh, alt season's coming up. So all the alt coins, they're expected to start running. If it hasn't started yet. So you have so some here's, change, man. Here's... A good okay. Here's how we're gonna leave this. From from both of you, whichever one of you guys can go first. I or anyone listening, I want to get in to NFTs and I want to make money. What and crypto? Let's, let's go with NFT and crypto. So starting with NFTs, I want to make some money. How do I go about doing that? Um. When I first started doing NFTs about, oh fuck, maybe it was like a month ago ish. It was like October. Yeah, it was October 1st. It was when I started going like actually ham in it. Uh, I started with 0.2 Ethereum in my wallet. So it's about like $400. And in a week, I had one Ethereum. How? buying and selling nfts okay yeah i'm not i'm not, I'm not gonna ask you like a play-by-play -play, but like so you're buying and selling these nfts play-by-play -play, i can kind of make it make it fast and easy 
Yeah. Um, play by play. I had exclusive access to a couple projects. One of them was museum, which was a very good project to have exclusive access to because I like, I kissed ass to the, the devs, of the project, I got early access to it. Um, the mint price to mint one of their museums, which speaking of uh, crypto punks, museums are basically framed pictures of crypto punks in a digitalized museum. I minted three of them for 0.1 Ethereum each. So I spent 0.3 Ethereum. I didn't have it all at once. So I bought one for 0.1. I sold it for 0.3 Ethereum. Okay. And I minted the other two. So I spent 0.1 of my 0.2 that I started off with. I sold it for 0.3 and I sold the others for 0.3 as well. So I made 0.9 Ethereum from a 0.3 investment. There were a couple other projects that that month, that kind that week that kind of took me off. Um, but museum was good. Um, what else was that week? There were a couple Solana drops. There, there are two different like Ethereum. There are two different NFT platforms. One that's based on Solana and one that's based on Ethereum on the Solana versus the Ethereum blockchain. Um, yeah, that's it's pretty much all there is to it. You find good projects you like, find good projects that have good devs, good art, good utility for their NFTs as well. And bingo, bingo, Dodge Durango, you are, you are rich. Do you, do you think, do you think you got lucky? No, because I I'm I'm not I'm not into <laughs> NFTs. I I don't I don't know much about NFTs, and I don't I've never owned an NFT. I've never looked into owning one, so I don't. You know, never paid really you never paid a thousand dollars for a JPEG before. No, bro. Oh <laughs> I should. I'm going to one day. Like, I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> no, but but on on a serious note, like, is there like? Like I was saying, I, I like to trade stocks and I know how to trade stocks, but I, I wouldn't yeah. have a fucking clue how to trade a fucking picture. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I understand. I understand. Like, I just uh, don't know. I like with, with the stocks, okay, you different. know when you're buying at a good price. How did you know you were getting those at a good price that you could profit from afterwards? Um, there are a couple of things I go into it. Number one is the roadmap. For the project what they have planned how are they going to give back to people who buy their nft um just overall what they what they have planned is, is that is that what you of the nft is that what you would uh say that's the utility of the nft yes and no number two would be specifically the utility of it does does, does me having the nft in my wallet does it give me any special perks um number one number one part of the utility aspect would be, hey, you know, am I going to make royalty sales of where can earn passive income just by taking my NFT off the market? Is there exclusive access for other good projects I can get by by holding this NFT? Because for the most part, a lot of these a lot of these are memberships. Really, um, it'll give you exclusive access to to other projects. They'll give you, you know, inside or insight itself to um, to NFTs and crypto, and give you information that you wouldn't otherwise have. Something that's actually very interesting to me is there are there are, um, NFT groups out there that make money from flipping NFTs, and their membership. The only way to to be a member of their group is to own one of their nfts groups where you know you have a membership to their group and access to their info and their profits by owning one of their nfts um i think the floor price for one of their one of their memberships is like three ETH. it's like twelve thousand. that's that's one example of utility from it but I, I hate to be like a, a shameless self shill, but I, I like work with a team of people who, you know, actually kind of do analysis for these NFTs and do analysis for these cryptos. 
and we pick upcoming projects that we believe are going to be profitable for people. And I would say, so you, so you, so you do have to go through some type of analysis before you like make the purchase, right? Oh yeah. Cause let's say, let's say um, on the initial release of an NFT, the mint price, the price you're paying to the creator of the NFT to mint one of their one of the NFTs in their collection, the mint price is 0.1 Ethereum. And then on the secondary market, they're selling for 0.05 Ethereum. That's something you're you're losing money on. But then they're selling in the secondary market for above the mint price. That's something you're profiting on. Does that make sense? I see. That's cool. So that's how I learned how I new. took my wallet. That's how I took my wallet, like from point. That's nice, dude. Good, to good for you, man. Still, hey, return on investment. That's a little what bit. I always say. Um, yeah, the the ROIs on these are are insane. Um, I don't, I don't know if you saw the podcast I was on with Vargas the last time. We talked a lot about sneaker reselling and stuff. Um, because because when it comes down to it, every every part of life is is reselling. All these, all these major companies, they're buying it from the supplier for $5 and they're selling it to consumers for 15 So that's reselling. Um, but, you know, to, to some extent, NFTs are a lot riskier just because there are too many factors that go into, you know, determining whether or not a project is going to be profitable if you mint it. And is it a long-term hold? Is it a short-term hold? If I sell it for 0.5 ETH, is it going to go to one ETH next <clears> week and I'll lose out on $2,000 of profit? There are just, you know, too many factors that go into, hey, is this project going to make me money? Is it going to lose me money? It's, it's hard to really quantify. Do you, and say, do you have... Do you have any sort of risk management when trading NFTs? Meaning I don't meaning, invest X percent. Meaning if you lose X percent of your investment, you're out. Yes and no. I, I've never really been in a project where I've, I've known I was going to lose money. I haven't really been in a project that has made me lose money. Um, so I don't really have the need for, uh, for you know, you know, safe, exit strategy per se right um, yeah that's that's what i mean like an like an exit strategy and i don't blame you man like this it's all pretty hot right now it's kind of hard to lose money right now i'd say even a fucking monkey could make money in the stock market right now everything's hot um so <clears throat> but as far as that you know paper <laughs> profit and paper losses um yeah. they are not, not losses or profits what i mean by that is okay um my nft that i have not sold yet is at 0.5 i'm into for 0.1 i have not made 0.4 profit yet and vice versa uh the nft i minted for 0.1 is currently sitting at 0.05 i haven't lost 0.05 yet so profit on paper losses on paper they do not count nothing counts until you sell it you know, I've, I've got one or two NFTs that are sitting at, you know, probably 0 0.02 less than what I paid for them. But I, I know they're going to be a long-term hold. Uh, number one, because the artist is one of the most famous digital artists in the world. He's sitting like 5 million followers on Instagram and Twitter, respectively. So that, that's one thing you can, you can really look at, you know, has this artist done art for other very profitable NFTs? What, what has he done? That's, that's one way you can kind of look at it. Um, is it just some no-namer that's putting out really shit art? Granted, there are projects out there like CryptoPunks where it's 8-bit art that anyone could do, really. Um, like the $500 the million day, dollar one? Yeah. At, at the end of the day, there's, there's just a thousand factors that go into it and there's one result. So no, I, I just, I just work with guys and we, we highlight projects to go 
before within our, within our own group. Um, if Vargas wants, I can put a link to the group in, um, in the description of the video. I think you're in it, right? Vargas pixel FNF. Yeah. So that's, that's, what's funny is like, I'm in this discord group and every time I see these notifications, I just click the notifications and don't even read them. Now I'm going to start fucking reading them because holy shit. Holy shit. Um, I think, yeah. Um, yeah. All right, we're going to have to stop here. Um, we need to revisit this in a few months. Um, and we'll set a schedule to where we can kind of meet. I'll release this episode. We'll, we'll do these crypto NFT episodes and we'll, yeah. 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 That JPEG is worth... Five hundred dollars. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Well, I'll release these on Saturdays. Maybe we'll do this once a month, once every two months. I, I do want to revisit this because we could just keep talking for hours. Um. We'll talk a little bit after I hit the uh, end buttons. But uh, thank you, Rojas. Thank you, Joey, for doing this on less than twenty-four hour notice. I really appreciate that. It means a lot. Uh, Cam, thank you for the idea. Um, this was good, man. I mean, I learned a lot. There's a lot to learn. Um, I know there's things we haven't covered. Um, but we, I feel like it is pertinent that we do. And I think it's pertinent that other people, not that I have a massive audience, but whoever does listen to this, I think it's good for people to know. Um, the safe moon army might watch this, so... (laughs) Well, good, good. People need to know what's going on. People need to know like what the, what what this is. So, thank you guys again, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. This episode of the Only Kings podcast is brought to you by OrganicPricedBooks.com. Guys, there's not been a better time to get into collecting comics, and OrganicPricedBooks.com has multiple formats such as the Omnibus Deluxe Heart Cover and trade paperbacks at huge discounts such as the amazing spider-man volume 5 originally at 125 marked down to 80 use my discount code noah n-o-a-h at checkout for an additional discount on top of what you're already getting which can range from anywhere between 25 to 42 percent off again organicpricebooks.com discount code noah n-o-a-h for an additional discount Now back to the show.